Hi, I'm Cedric Walker. I'm professor of biomedical engineering at Tulane University. Thanks for hanging out with us today when we talk about the way in which to send an assembly language program onto your MSP430 launchpad. To start out, be sure that your launchpad is connected to your computer through that little mini USB cable. And you'll know that it's connected if you see a little green light on the launch pad right there. Then look and make sure that all five of the jumpers on the launch pad, here on J3, it's upside down, the ones that say test and reset and reset, receive, transmit, and VCC, make sure that all five of those jumpers are connected or you won't be able to download a program from your computer onto your MSP430 chip. You should have Code Composer Studio already on your desktop. It looks like a Rubik's Cube, and you double-click on it and get it launched. It'll come up with this little splash screen that'll display for just a moment. And then it's going to ask you whether you want to use the same uh, workspace folder location that you used when you originally set up Code Compute Composer Studio V4. Uh, I've chosen the default, and that's to put things in My Documents and then a new folder within My Documents that's called launch pad work and that's a perfectly good place to put it. So we'll go ahead and click on OK. It'll take a few minutes and load some of the elements of Code Composer Studio V4. And it opens up a workspace that's just whatever windows were open the last time Code Composer, Code Composer was launched. We're going to do something completely new. We're going to start a new uh, project on our MSP430. So we're going to close out all of these windows and start something new. So to close out each of the windows, just normal Windows thing, click on the little X. So to start the new project, we'll click on File, New, and we'll go over and scroll down to Other. So the pathway is File, New, Other. And within Other, in the folder that's labeled C slash C++, we'll double click on CCS project. And if it happens that when you open this, the fold you just see the three folders, go ahead and open the CC++ folder and then double click here on CCS project. The project that we're going to do is just to copy one of the sample files that comes with the launch pad. And the sample file is the one that does a blinky light with a software timing loop. So we're going to give this project a name like Blinky Light Software Timing. We can go ahead and accept the default location and click on Next. Go ahead and accept all the defaults. Don't link it to any of the other projects that you've written yet. And most important here are two checkoffs. One, be sure that you have a check mark in Treat as an Assembly Only Project. And be sure that the device variant that you have selected is MSP430G2231. It's available in the pull-down menu. Be sure you choose 2231. All the other uh, settings on this CCS Projects window can be left in default. And go ahead and click on Finish, and you're done for. So here's the new project that we just created called Blinky Light Software Timing. And inside that folder, it already has all of the MSP 430G2231 uh, specific commands so that the assembler will know, for example, where port 1 is located. But it doesn't yet have your software. So now it's time to add a file that will include the software that you're going to write. So we've got Linky Light Software Timing Loop highlighted. And we'll click on Project, Add Files to Project. And the file that I'm going to add to the project is one that I already had located in my directory. And it's the file, the very first one of the example files that comes. It's called ms430x20x3 underscore 1. Underscore 1, I guess, means it's the first one. So we'll go ahead and select that from among all the files that have a .asm extension. Click on Open. And now, it's in our directory. We can see that the file is in the directory. There it is, msp430.20x3 underscore 1. And if we go ahead and double click on it, we can review what's in that uh, piece of assembly language code. So there's the description. Uh, it toggles port 1, bit 0, 
by exclusive ORing port 1 bit 0 itself after a certain amount of time. And you can go down and you'll see that right now the timing loop is set for a delay of 50,000 cycles around this single loop. And I'm going to go ahead and change that to have the maximum amount of time. And so I'll make it 65,535, which is the biggest 16-bit number that we can have. So as soon as I made that change, an asterisk went up next to the file name here. And that asterisk means that there's some unsaved work that needs to be saved. So to save our work, I'll flip back to the menu so you can see that on the screen. And I'll go ahead and do a file save. The little asterisk went away. The process of converting the source code, what we have here in the window that's in assembly language, into something that the computer can read is called building the project. So let's go ahead and build this. This is TI software. It's supposed to be OK. Hopefully, we won't see any error messages. Let's see what happens when we build it. So I'm going to click on Project, and then I'm going to do Build Project. As soon as I do Build Project, um, the console right down at the bottom of the screen here is going to start delivering a whole bunch of messages. So right after I click on Build Project, we'll scroll in and take a look at what the console says. So here we are in the console. It was blank just a minute ago. And it's giving us a bunch of status messages as it went through and did the compilation and built, built the project for us. Good thing to see, finished building. That's a good message. Uh, building the target, invoking the link, or anything that's in black uh, print can pretty much be ignored. If you get a red warning message, no suitable entry point found, ignore it. It doesn't hurt you. Anything that's a warning will still let you uh, convert your software into something that the MSB430 can run. If you get something that says an error instead of a warning, though, you need to go back and figure out why. All right, so the question is, did it work? And the answer is, yeah, the light is blinking. So if it doesn't come up blinking right from the get-go, you might have to press the reset button right here. But after you press the reset button, the light should flash. Let's make sure now that we don't need to be connected up here to the USB port of the computer anymore, and that this really can run on its own as a freestanding application. So now I've disconnected the MSB430 launchpad from its USB port. It's connected to a little battery pack here. There's two AA batteries that I have inside the pack. And as soon as I turn the switch on and on, the light blinks again. And so now I know that I've established a freestanding application on the MSP430. And we'll modify it now by changing the rate at which it blinks. So here's the code that we've been using. It has a timing delay, uh, trips around the loop of 65535. I went ahead and took out the leading zero. Um, that would actually imply something larger than a 16-bit number. So I took it out because sometimes uh, the assembler gets a little bit angry if the numbers have too many digits in them. So just to make it happy, I made this 65535. And now I'm going to change that to half of 65535, or 32768. And that should make the blinking go much faster. OK, now there's an asterisk up here, which means that I have changed something in my file. I'll go ahead and save my file. So file save, asterisk went away, and now the constant 32768 is in there. And I'm going to go ahead and download it to my launch pad now. Before you download it, make sure that the launch pad is plugged into the computer. You'll get so many error messages if the launch pad isn't connected to the computer with the USB port. And if you happen to have had the battery pack connected to the launch pad, disconnect the battery pack too. So now the launch pad is powered only by the USB port. And we'll go ahead and click on, just as before, Project, Build Project. We get a few messages. And let's go ahead and take a look at the console. Once again in the console, all we saw is that single uh, warning message, no entry point found. That's OK. Let's take a look at the launch pad. Now I know that you're going to want to clap and cheer and jump up and down when you get yours to work just like this works.